Welcome to fourth video on working capital series. I have picked up this problem from study material prescribed for CA intermediate students. From the following data, we have to calculate maximum permissible bank finance under three methods suggested by Tandon committee. Even though there are three methods, only the first and second method are in practice. Third method considered as very stringent, so it is not in practice now. So you are given information about their liabilities, creditors, other current liabilities, bank borrowings. Total is 410. And current assets given as raw material, work in progress, finished goods, receivables, other current assets. Total is 510. And total core current asset is 200 lakhs. This is applicable only for the third method, which is of course not in practice. Okay, but let's have some idea about it. Let's see what is the first method. See in first method, what happens is we will be arriving at the working capital gap by comparing the current asset with current liability. When we say current asset, we take entire current asset. But when we say current liability, it is only current liabilities excluding bank borrowings because that's what we are trying to find out, right? Excluding bank borrowing. So excluding bank borrowing means this creditors plus other current liabilities is the current liability considered for this purpose. So 510 minus 160, that is the working capital gap. So the first method says 75% of the working capital gap can be funded by the banks. So whatever is the working capital gap here into 75% that works out to 262.50. So this is the eligible bank finance as per method one. Then let's move on to method two, same numbers, okay? Method two says only 75% of the current asset should be considered for this purpose and that should be compared with the current liability, then eligible bank finance can be arrived at. So already we know 510 is the current asset, 510 into 75%, that should be compared with the current liability of 160. So now you get eligible bank finances 222.50. So now look at the difference. In the first method, the eligible bank finance is 262.5, whereas in the second method, it has come down. So second method, comparatively, it is moderate. First method is very liberal. Second method is moderate. And third method is even more stringent. How? Look at this. Third method says we have to consider only 75 percentage of current asset minus core current asset and that should be compared with current liability for arriving at the eligibility we know current asset is 510 we know core current asset is 200 given in the question so 510 minus 200 that is 310 only can be considered for funding purpose in that 75 percent okay and that should be compared with the other current liability of 160 so what you are getting is 72.5 look it has even more come down from 200 and yeah here we had from 262.50 it has come down to 222.50 and it has come down further to 72.50 in the third method so it is considered as very stringent this is considered as moderate and this method is considered as very liberal so what banks will do is most of the time they'll arrive at under method one and method two they'll compare and they'll select whichever is lower okay so here if you note that mpbf decreases gradually from first method to second method then to third method here the firm has already availed the bank borrowings right already they have availed the bank borrowings how much 250 and here 262.5 is eligibility here 222.5 is eligibility and here the eligibility is much much lesser so look at here firm has already availed the bank loan of 250 it means as per first method it, it can still avail 12.5 lakhs and as per second method it can still avail uh, more or uh, is that possible no they have already availed 250 second method says eligible bank finance is only 222.50 so as per the second method and as per third method also they have borrowed excess it means they have to bring down their borrowings so as per second method and third method they are not eligible for additional financing because they have already availed the maximum or they went beyond the maximum and for your information again i'm repeating third method is not in practice as you watch this video i wish to introduce one of our best-selling course so that you can continue your learning now what you have seen is working capital okay so that's going to be relevant for bank executives so if you're a bank executive and if you wish to learn more about working capital then you can go for this course called banking credit analysis process or if you are a bank executive preparing for a certified credit professional examination then there is a course called certified credit professional courses package it is mainly focused on your examination angle 
or if you are a student pursuing CA, CMA, ACCA, then I would suggest go for this course, Financial Management, a complete study. Okay, so I'm going to put the link of all the three courses depending upon your background, whether you are a banker or bank executive preparing for CCP exam or student pursuing professional course or even graduation, post graduation like BCom, BBA, MCom, MBA. Uh, this course will be of great use for you. Okay, so go ahead and enroll the link in the description below and you can also use the coupon code coupon code 10 disc 